solar power plant. It's uh, expected to, once it's completed, that is, uh, bring power to over 20,000 homes. So that's the one initiative that we're looking at this morning. A little bit earlier, I also spoke to you about the Sol Blaike University, a new development also here in this particular province. And something else that's putting the Northern Cape on the map is the SKA project. Remember that? There was a lot of talk about that and a lot of excitement uh, a while ago, but it is going strong and we do understand that now uh, more BRICS companies or BRICS countries, I should say, are seeking to join in on that particular initiative. We do understand that as things stand, only two of South Africa's partners are currently involved in the SKA project. Scientists are currently in the process of developing and building the most sensitive radio telescope that mankind has ever attempted. So quite a big task. And let me bring you a little bit more information now on that. Let's take a look at this insert. Mankind attempts to unravel the mysteries of the final frontier. When the SKA is completed, it will allow scientists to look deep into space and unravel its secrets. The entire world is involved in one way or another, with South Africa receiving the largest slice of the SKA pie. Partnerships are of vital importance. So the ministers here are intensely interested. Even those who are not part of the organization or not member countries would see their astronomers participating in this project and themselves might consider joining the SKA organization. It is a very ambitious project, not only South Africa, uh, uh, at the same time for the BRICS uh, countries, members cooperation and for Russia. Because my country is developing a lot in this area, and I uh, can to I can see uh, uh, that South Africa now is a very good partner for us. Excitement is brewing at the SKA site. The stalk is about to deliver a new baby. We are catfish. Yes, that that will be in March, and then we hope to launch that at the end of March. But we'll be doing tests on it for several months after that and then we'll get the second dish, do tests on that and then we'll roll out the other dishes after that. The SKA will cost 650 million euros per country. The amount of data expected to be generated equals a billion HD videos downloaded per day. It will need a supercomputer a hundred thousand times faster than the best we currently have. Ulrich Hendricks, SABC News, Carnarvon in the Northern Cape. My colleague there, Ulrich Hendricks, is just filing that report and giving us some more insight as to what is happening there with regards to the SKA. Uh, and now let's talk about what's happening in the province. Of course, the best person to know about that or to bring us information is the Premier herself. Premier Sylvia Lucas joins us now. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda, and morning to the viewers. Throughout the course of the show, we've been going at length discussing the various uh, um, developments that we've seen in the province. We know that there are some challenges and we're going to speak uh, about those in just a moment. But a lot of work has been done, hasn't it? For sure. We are very excited as the Northern Cape because I think we've made a lot of strides. And many people don't want to acknowledge it, but fortunately, more people acknowledge that we've made a lot of strides as a province. You can imagine, we started from a zero base and today we are where we are. And already we have been uh, a province earmarked for extreme adventure, but also for science and technology. And we are so lucky to this to have opened our university this year. So there is a lot of development. Even if you look in terms of the fact that at Hotazel in this province, we have got the biggest center plant in the world maybe that we have got for the beneficiation of manganese so if we speak in terms of this mega projects we have made a lot of pro progress but also in terms of the social side to make sure that we change people life we have built how many houses more than 65,000 to make sure that we give shelter to people we have also more than a thousand houses have been rectified some of them have been of not so good quality but what we have done is to make sure that people have got access to basic services but we've also make sure that we do together with the national government develop our economy in the country and especially in the province you know this province we have got 
uh, natural resources that are the ones that we need to develop and that is also our biggest like the mining our biggest job creators in terms of what we are having in this province but also the issue of renewable energy since we are standing here at Roachfontein last year at the 1st of April I uh, together with the people that are responsible for this plant we did the sort turning and today a year later, they are on the brink of making sure that they do contribute fully to the grid, to ESCOM. But already in the province, we've got a few uh, projects in terms of renewable energy. Near Phillipstown, one has already been uh, contributing to the national grid. Near the R, tomorrow one will open in Pof Adder, near Pof Adder, the day after in Aris. We also have the small hydro development near Kakamas that opened about two months ago. So you can see there is a lot of development, but also this uh, very same pro projects are contributing to job creation. That's why you could have seen that at least 3% less unemployment, according to the official official uh, uh, numbers, that there is at least 3% less unemployment in the province. You have said you will be coming to the challenges. Maybe I can start with the challenges. Just to say that one of our biggest challenges, people will say it's unemployment, but I will say it's the lack of skills to make sure that people have got sustainable jobs. But that is why we are trying as the provincial government to address that specific gap, working together with the Mining Managers Association, with the mines, also working together with the CITES to make sure that we do address the lack of skills that you usually experience in a province that used to be marginal like ours. But as the ANC government, we have made a lot of strides to make sure that we involve our young people, that we involve our women. Even the women we have now already given uh, uh, loans to 33 business women who, who can expand their businesses but also we are training 35 groups of women that we want them to also come into the business but we are going to give them grants to make sure that they can develop some of their businesses. So once you've provided the skills and the various capacity building initiatives, are there opportunities though for people to find work and employment? Poverty remains a key concern for this particular part of the world. Many people dependent on social security grants. About 23% of, of the households in the province are dependent on social grants. But social grants are giving at least a lifeline to people. Because as you say, poverty are still, poverty are still rife in some areas in the province. But we are addressing that specific issues. Like I've said, there are opportunities, a lot of opportunities. You know about the strategic infrastructure projects that are now being opened. And the Northern Cape is part of at least six. They are benefiting from at least six of the strategic infrastructure projects. So you, My apologies, I'm going to interrupt you because we've got about a minute or so to go. Uh, part of the developments that you spoke of in the education front, you touched on Salt Lake University. We also spoke briefly off air about the six new schools that are being opened. But on the one side of the coin, there are these schools that are proposed. On the other side, we're hearing complaints from teachers that they haven't been paid uh, their, their, their salaries for over three months, temporary teachers and some grade R teachers. Could you give us some uh, response as to how far that uh, has, has, have you gone in solving that problem? Just yesterday, I got information that the only ones that are still not being paid is the great art teachers. Why is it? They used to be played through a conditional, they, they used to be paid through a conditional grant. But now they must be put on PESAL. To be put on PESAL, you need specific documents like tax clearance certificates and things like that. So that is still outstanding. And that is why, especially the great art practitioners, have not been paid yet. But according to Department of Education, and I spoke to them yesterday because yesterday the chairperson of SATU once again brought it to my attention that there are still some of the teachers that have not been paid. So I spoke to them yesterday and they said as soon as all the documents have been put into the personal system that people will be receiving their uh, salaries. It's actually very, I'm very sorry. We need to apologize to these people because no one wants to work without pay. But unfortunately, you know the systems, how it works. It's, we should comply with our systems to to make sure that we do have credible information on our systems. And that is unfortunately the issue. Well, thank you so much for putting it on record for us and apologizing there for uh, whatever inconveniences were caused. We'll have to leave it there for now. We continue with our broadcast from the Northern Cape in just a moment right now. A quick ad break. We'll be back with more just now.